couple of these games that go in the situational betting articles are, are plays. You know, they're just starting points for you to, uh, to circle games to evaluate further. And, you know, that's something that, uh, that Cole Ryan has said in his segment about the calendar crunch, you know, that, that these aren't necessarily plays. They're not endorsements. They're just things that you want to circle, things that you want to keep in mind, and then hope that the numbers and the situations line up for you so that you can, you know, fire on those plays and make some money. So take a look at the NBA card for tonight. I know we had Cole Ryan's segment, and again, as I said, I know it was a little bit abbreviated, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but a big card for a Monday night in the NBA, actually 10 games on the docket tonight, which is, you know, much bigger than we usually get here uh, on Monday nights. But, you know, you've got a couple of games in my situational betting article, three of them to be exact, uh, all of them eight o'clock or later tips. So we'll look at those in a few minutes, but Brooklyn and Miami here, you got Miami a 10 point favorite. And, you know, the, the thing about this time of year and why I say that, you know, these bad teams are, are generally the ones worth backing is because, you know, you're getting, this is an inflated line. This number on a regular night in January, some kind of thing like that, it's probably going to be eight and a half, maybe nine. But the perception is that Miami needs to win. The perception is that Miami wants to win. You know, Miami right now, when they take the floor, a half game out of fourth, a game out of third, and a half game ahead of sixth. So while all these teams are interchangeable, at this point, it's not necessarily about who you want to play. It's about getting home court advantage. And obviously the top four seeds in both conferences get that. So for Miami and Charlotte and Boston and Atlanta, you're playing to start at home. You know, all of these teams have better home records and road records. And in Charlotte's case, dramatically better home record. So, you know, there is that incentive. There is that thing to play for. However, is it that much of an incentive that Miami is going to go out there and beat Brooklyn by 11 or more? I don't know. You know, like I said, I think this line's inflated by a point, maybe a point and a half at the most, uh, just because you've got this perception of a Brooklyn team that, you know, I mean, they stepped up at home against the Cavs, sure. But are they going to step up on the road in Miami? We don't know. But are you willing to lay double digits with the Heat? Are you willing to take double digits with Brooklyn? Those are the decisions that you're forced to make here at this time of year, and they're not easy decisions to make by any means. But you know, when you get these bad teams going out on the road against teams playing for something, you're going to pay a premium. And there are a couple of games like this tonight. There are actually three games like this tonight where you've got situations like that. So, you know, if, if your course of action is to stay away from them, that's perfectly fine. If your course of action is to take the dog, you know, default to the dog because, you know, laying double digits in professional leagues is, is you know, never really a, a great idea. It's a tough call to make, to be sure. Oklahoma City and Toronto. Oklahoma City, two-and-a-half-point favorite in this one tonight. Uh, obviously, the, the spotlight game of the night in the NBA. You've got Oklahoma City going out on the road to Toronto. Air Canada Center is a pretty good environment. We'll see how subdued it is for a Monday night. But you know, for Toronto here, I think this is a game that means a lot to them. You know, you've got an Oklahoma City team that's – stuck in third place. I mean, they're, they're not going anywhere. They've already won their division. You know, there's nowhere for them to go. They're not going to piss away a five and a half game lead uh, and fall down by the Clippers in fourth. So, you know, how many nights does this Thunder team continue to get up? I mean, this is, this team is 51 and 22. Nobody's talking about them because you've got what the Warriors and the Spurs are doing this season. Oklahoma City's won seven in a row. They deserve to be road chalk here in this spot. There's no doubt about that. But you've got a Toronto team here that, you know, two and a half out of first place in the Eastern Conference. They can pick up a half game tonight because the Cavs are idle. Uh, You know, for Toronto, this is kind of a measuring stick game, you know, because you play good teams in the Eastern Conference. You don't really play a whole lot of great teams. Oklahoma City is a great team. So for Toronto here, you know, yeah, it's it's not an interconference matchup, but it's a measuring stick. It's a game where you want to see how you stack up against the real elite teams, not to mention when you're Toronto and you've had so much playoff disappointment, this is a playoff like atmosphere to you. So you want to come out here and play well. You want to make sure you execute your offense. You want to make sure you play well on defense. So you know, there's a lot on the line here for Toronto, certainly more than there is for Oklahoma city, but Oklahoma city is rolling right now. So that's why they're the road favorite. That's why they've gotten a little bit of the betting action here thus far. Uh, but you know, again, you have two teams that are very, very good. 
And at this time of the year, those are probably the games that you want to try to find an edge on because you, you would think in theory, you're going to get a max effort from both of those teams because you know, Oklahoma city should get in the flow of the crowd, should get in the flow of the atmosphere. And for Toronto, of course, the reasons I already outlined. So should be a real good one here tonight between the Thunder and the Raptors. The Knicks and the Pelicans. We're seeing Knicks money here come in at rather heavy, actually. With this number up to five. It's gone through five to five and a half. It books like Pinnacle, uh, five dimes. Uh, the Greek also sitting five and a half. And, you know, for the Knicks to go out on the road here as a favorite and get respect from the betters that are getting down before noon, you know, these are probably a lot of early West Coast guys getting down on some of this action. So, you know, uh, you got to figure there's some sharper money involved here. That's a very significant line move. Very significant. When you get a team that's not particularly great, a team with a coach that's not well-respected at all, and they're getting road money here, very significant line move. So, unfortunately, you're a little bit behind the line move. You're going to be behind the eight ball if this is a game that you look to play. But I would certainly respect this Knicks action that's coming in here in the morning. And, of course, New Orleans – you know, without Anthony Davis, they've been really, really bad. They've dropped three straight, uh, what, eight of their last 10. Uh, if you extend it further, 14 of their last 17. So for the Pelicans here, you know, I mean, this is a team that, that really bottomed out early in the season with injuries, and they're bottoming out again. A lot of guys on the injury report. Of course, Anthony Davis done for the year. So, you know, the Knicks, who are trying to do – something similar to what the magic are trying to do. You know, they're trying to build up this identity, this culture. Uh, you know, they fired Derek Fisher. They've got Phil Jackson, who's kind of, you know, uh, taking over almost in a, in a dictatorial role at this point with the firing of Fisher, you know, one of his former players. I mean, that couldn't have been a very easy decision for him, uh, but you've got this Knicks team that wants to establish something. And because of that, you know, they are still a hungry team at this stage of the game. And you Really can't say the same about the New Orleans Pelicans. San Antonio and Memphis. San Antonio, seven, seven and a half point favorite here. The problem with San Antonio is that you can't play one of their games until about mid afternoon when you find out who's actually going to play, you know, because you really have no idea for the most part uh, who might sit because Greg Popovich, you know, not his first rodeo. And, and this team, you know, I mean, they're locked into the number two seed. They're not going anywhere. They're not catching Golden State. I don't think they care if they have to go on the road and play Golden State. So, you know, for the Spurs, uh, you really can't do anything unless you play against them, assuming that you get some line value with guys sitting. But then that's a dangerous proposition because you know, they had a bunch of guys sitting against Memphis last week and still beat them. And if they don't sit, guys, then everybody that has been sitting out is going to be well-rested and ready to go. So San Antonio is probably a team you want to look to stay away from overall here, you know, uh, unless they're playing a premier opponent like a Golden State or an Oklahoma City, somebody like that. And of course, they set everybody against Oklahoma City anyway. Uh, but, you know, definitely be careful with the Spurs. Don't get down until you realize or see, you know, who's actually going to be in the lineup for them. Uh, what, that is actually a game in my situational spot um, article because, you know, that, that's like I, I, everything I wrote in the article is the same thing I said here. You know, what, what type of lineup do you get from the Spurs? And also Memphis, you know, you, you want to hold on to that five seed. You'd much rather play the, the Clippers than the Thunder. And Memphis won't beat either one of them anyway, but you, know, you want to give yourself as good of a chance as possible, which would mean playing the Clippers. So Memphis still has some incentive here. Uh, they've lost seven out of ten and two straight, falling back to the pack here a little bit. Um, but, you know, again, you, you just you can't do anything right now with San Antonio until you see who's actually going to play. Phoenix and Minnesota is an interesting one here because you've got two teams loaded with young players and you've got a Phoenix team that, you know, while they've continued to be terrible here throughout the season and they've lost seven to 10 themselves, they're still playing hard. You know, they've got some guys that are trying to make a name for themselves. And again, those are teams that you want to back at this time of the year. Do you want to back them tonight against Minnesota? No, because Minnesota's in the same boat. And you've got a lot of young players trying to you know, establish themselves um, Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, these guys are still playing hard night in and night out. So easy to see why Minnesota has gone up to a seven point favorite here in this one, opening number five and a half. You know, when you get two teams that want to play, I think this is a spot where you look toward the over, which is already extremely high at 218, but there won't be any defense played in this game whatsoever. Phoenix doesn't play defense to begin with. Minnesota is going to see a team not playing defense and they're just going to want to run the floor. 
take a lot of shots. Uh, this is a game that could fly over with a very high total. So maybe something that you want to consider there with that. Atlanta, three-point chalk at Chicago. Uh, you know, we just talked about Chicago there in that last segment with Philip Ross and Reich, where this is a team that, you know, it, it has some leadership qualities um, among the roster, but there really aren't any right now from the coaching spot with Fred Hoiberg. Coming out of a team meeting, you're going to get those segments of people that say, well, they came out of a team meeting, they're going to be ready to play. That's not always the case. I imagine that sometimes team meetings don't go according to plan. Probably a lot of guys airing dirty laundry. You know, uh, that's why the media is not really privy to what gets discussed in a lot of those team meetings. So uh, in this particular situation, I think you got to look at the road team. I think you got to look at Atlanta. I know this one opened three and a half, come down a little bit to three. Uh, but for me, you know, I'm going to take the team that I trust more, the team that's playing better right now. That's Atlanta. Because Atlanta's in a position where they really want to roll into the postseason with some momentum. I mean, you look at these Eastern Conference teams that are in the top six spots, and you look at the Cavs, and the Cavs appear vulnerable right now. They really do. I mean, when LeBron takes it to another level, they're a much different team, and maybe he'll do that with regularity in the playoffs. But this is a team that's had issues throughout the season. They've had some infighting. They fired their coach. You know, this is a Cavs team that, that – even at 52 and 21 just doesn't have that same perception of dominance that we've seen, you know, from the top teams in the Western conference. So for Atlanta, you know, everything is about the bigger picture here. And of course, finishing third, you know, probably something that they want to do um, might be better to be fourth and play one of Boston or Miami the way Charlotte's playing. But I also think for Charlotte, you know, maybe kind of more of a small sample size type of thing where over the long haul, over a seven game series, you know, maybe they're not as good as they've been playing here in the regular season. So, you know, I think that Atlanta tonight, again, you want to you want to go with the team where you know what you're going to get. And I, I think from Atlanta, you know that you're going to get a pretty good effort. And from Chicago, team meeting or not, you just don't know. Los Angeles Lakers here take on the Utah Jazz. Utah is a 14-point favorite in this one. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if they cover this number. I wouldn't lay it necessarily. But – You've got a situation here with the Lakers. D'Angelo Russell rolled his ankle over the weekend. Kobe Bryant playing on the road whenever he can, you know, to because road fans are paying a lot of money for tickets to see Kobe Bryant's final game in, in their city. And, you know, uh, the, I don't know if there's any pressure from the NBA to get Kobe to play if he can, but I think it's something that Kobe wants to do. You know, I mean, this is a guy, you can say what you want about, some of the things with him earlier in his career and whatnot. But I, I think that this is a guy that does care about his image, does care about, you know, how he's perceived on the history of the NBA and how he's perceived by other fan bases. I mean, every time this guy goes on the road city, he's getting a standing ovation from the fans there. So you look at this team going on the road when Kobe plays, they're probably not going to be very good. You could make a justifiable case for laying this with Utah tonight. I, I think 14 is too high of a number to lay with a Utah team that's not dominant like Golden State, like San Antonio, uh, that type of thing. But I certainly understand why the line is this high and why the odds makers are kind of begging you to take the Lakers. And you know, for Lakers backers, it may not necessarily work out. Dallas and Denver. Denver's a one and a half point favorite tonight. This line concerns me a little bit because I expected it to be bigger, but. Mavericks, third game in four nights here off playing Golden State and Sacramento. Denver in the altitude, of course, three games in four nights in the altitude here late in the season. Very difficult spot. Denver playing pretty well overall. I mean, this is a team that's actually on the fringes of the playoff race because nobody above them, Houston or Dallas, has been playing particularly well lately. Um, you know, we, we know the things about Dallas. We know Dallas has played well against bad teams. They've struggled with good teams. Denver's not a good team, but Denver's a team that plays hard almost every night. Mike Malone has the respect of this team. So I think from that standpoint, you know, you can you can look at this uh at this matchup tonight and really like Denver. Now again, as I said, the line scares me a little bit. I expect it to be more two and a half, three. Uh, but you know, still I think that you're going to be okay if you take uh the Nuggets here in this one. Sacramento and Portland. Portland's an eleven point favorite tonight. And what I want to focus on is what I've been focusing on throughout with Sacramento, and that's George Carl. George Carl had some comments about Willie Cauley Stein's play the other day, saying, uh, you know, basically, some, or yesterday, I believe it was, basically saying something to the effect of, 
you know, uh, somebody wanted to applaud Collie Stein's play. 